Welcome to Important Monuments of Cyrene. The Sanctuary of Apollo sits on a prominent edge of the Plateau of Cyrene, overlooking the Mediterranean Sea. It could be accessed either by the road from Apollonia, via the necropolis, or by the Sacred Way, coming from the Agora of the city. The abundance of temples and statues throughout the city reflect the various Greco-Roman and Egyptian cult influences over the centuries. Temples dedicated to Apollo, Cyrene, and Zeus stood alongside those of Ptolemaic gods, such as Serapis and Iset. Numerous fountains were decorated to represent other gods, including the city's namesake, Cyrene. A vestibule known as a propyleum marked its entrance and highlighted the fountain of Apollo. God of the sun and of protection, Apollo was an important deity to both Greeks and Romans. The sanctuary built in his honor was considered to be sacred. The imposing temple was built on a natural cornice, stretching more than 200 meters in length and roughly 50 meters in width, and was surrounded by a vast Doric colonnade. Sections uncovered by archaeologists indicate restorations to the columns were made between 115 and 116 CE. The altar was located in front of the temple. Both are estimated to be the same age, though restored at different times. Many bulls were sacrificed each year at the altar in honor of Apollo. The imprint in the stone of the ring used to strap the animals down is visible to this day. Carved during the Roman era, the Apollo Cytheride was discovered near the temple. It is considered an important archaeological find. The statue of Apollo was in pieces when it was uncovered. Remarkably, most fragments were found, and the restored statue is currently at the British Museum. The team extrapolated the statue's final look based on the current partial reconstruction and placed it inside the temple to reflect the patron deity of the area.
The amphitheater of Cyrene is located on what is known as the Terrace of Myrtosa, next to the Sanctuary of Apollo. It was built on top of the old theater in the second century. Originally used as a stage, the theater became an amphitheater once the taste for Roman gladiatorial entertainment reached the city. Entrances were placed at both ends of the amphitheater. A wall replaced the first two rows of bleachers as protection from the array of wild animals in the ring. The tunnel used for the parade of beasts and gladiators circled the arena, unlike the Roman Colosseum's tunnel, which was beneath the amphitheater. The basement and corridors accommodated both the gladiators and the animals, and included lifts that raised the traps into the arena's center. Since the original theater was close to the cliffside, the expansion didn't allow for a perfect circle. Instead, junctions of the semicircle formed the arena into an oval shape. This elliptical formation still ensured an excellent view from all angles. The team decided to create a perfectly round theater for technical reasons and use the structure of the Roman theater as their reference.